Welcome to Vango Notes for Human Resource Management, 11th edition, by Gary Dessler. Chapter 1, Introduction to Human Resource Management. Section 1, Big Ideas. Have you ever gone to a hotel where everything was just perfect? Your luggage was delivered straight to your room, where a complimentary breakfast coupon awaited you. Your room was bright and clean, and the food in the restaurant was delicious. Well, all your satisfaction happened because of people. Sometimes you get good service, and sometimes you get bad service. The difference is the people. Being a good company and getting results comes from having committed people. Making sure you have the best people for the job, in turn, requires a good working knowledge of human resource management. But what exactly is human resource management? Human resource management is the process of acquiring training, appraising, and compensating employees, and of attending to their labor relations, health and safety, and fairness concerns. All managers need specific principles and techniques to do a good job on the people aspects of managing. These include selecting job candidates, orienting and training new employees, providing incentives and benefits, appraising performance, and building employee commitment. You may be wondering why these concepts and techniques are important to all managers. Perhaps it's easier to answer this by talking about some of the mistakes you don't want to make while managing. For example, you don't want to hire the wrong person for the job. You don't want to have your people not doing their best. You don't want to have your company taken to court because of discriminatory actions. And you don't want to commit any unfair labor practices. Learning even a little about human resource management will help you avoid mistakes like these. And more importantly, it can help you ensure that you get results through people. In fact, many managers have been successful simply because they have a knack of hiring the right people for the right job and motivating, appraising, and developing them. So, all managers are, in a sense, human resource managers since they get involved in activities like recruiting, interviewing, selecting, and training. However, most firms have human resource departments that provide managers with specialized assistance. And in providing this assistance, the human resource manager carries out three distinct functions. Let's look at these now. The first function of the human resource manager is the line function. In this role, the human resource manager directs the activities of the people in his own department and in related service areas. In other words, he has the right or authority to issue orders to other managers or employees. Second, the human resource manager serves a coordinative function by coordinating all organizational personnel activities. In this role, she acts as the right arm of the top executive to ensure that line managers are implementing the firm's human resource policies and practices. For example, the human resource manager makes sure that everyone is adhering to the company's sexual harassment policies. The final function of the human resource manager is the staff function. In this role, the human resource manager assists and advises all other company managers. For instance, he assists the CEO to better understand the personnel aspects of the company's strategic options. The human resource department also assists in hiring, training, evaluating, rewarding, counseling, promoting, and firing employees. It administers the various benefit programs, such as health and accident insurance. It helps line managers comply with equal opportunity and occupational safety laws and plays an important role in handling grievances and labor relations. So, the Human Resource Department is obviously very busy, more so today than ever before, as human resource managers play an increasingly central role in managing companies. Let's see how. More companies are expanding abroad in order to increase their sales, reduce labor costs, and seek new foreign products and services to sell. More globalization means more competition, and more competition means more pressure to lower costs, to make employees more productive, and to do things better and less expensively. So both workers and companies have to work harder and smarter than they did before globalization. Human resource management can help both workers and companies do this. Technology has also had a huge impact on how people work and on the sorts of skills and training today's workers need. 
more and more traditional factory jobs are going high-tech. For example, new technologies such as automation and just-in-time manufacturing systems mean that even manufacturing jobs require more reading, mathematics, and communication skills than before. Because it's the human resource function that traditionally recruits, selects, trains, and compensates employees, changes like these make employers highly reliant on human resource management. You see, the key to utilizing all that new technology is usually not the technology, but again, the people. And managers must select, train, and pay these people in a way that focuses on improving their skills and knowledge. Along with globalization and technology, trends in workforce demographics are making finding and hiring good employees more of a challenge. Most notably, the United States workforce is becoming older and more multi-ethnic. As the baby boomers, born between 1946 and 1960, start retiring in the next few years, employers will face a severe labor shortage. And the labor force participation rates of women and minorities have continued to increase, creating a more diverse workforce. So, employers will remain focused on the aging of the workforce, the growing numbers of workers with elder care responsibilities, and higher rates of immigration. What does all this mean for human resource management? With these trends, the human resource manager's job has grown broader and more strategic. In the earliest firms, personnel first took over hiring and firing from supervisors, ran the payroll department, and administered benefit plans. As technology in areas like testing and interviewing began to emerge, the personnel department began to play an expanded role in employee selection, training, and promotion. The emergence of union legislation in the 1930s added protecting the firm in its interaction with unions to the personnel department's responsibilities. Then, as new equal employment legislation created the potential for discrimination-related lawsuits and penalties, the advice and oversight of human resource professionals became indispensable. Today, globalization, technology, and the trends we've talked about mean that human resource managers have taken on many new responsibilities. Getting results through committed people is the name of the game, and to do this requires a good working knowledge of human resource management concepts and techniques. That's the end of this section. Section 2, Practice Questions Okay, now that we've reviewed the chapter, let's see how much you've retained. I'll give you a series of multiple choice, true-false, and essay questions to think about. After a few seconds for each, I'll give you the correct answer and an explanation. Let's start with multiple choice. Ready? Question 1. The management process includes the five basic functions of planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and A. Controlling, or B. Training. The answer is A. The controlling function includes setting standards such as sales quotas or production levels, comparing actual performance with these standards, and then taking corrective action if needed. Question 2. Examples of human resource management concepts and techniques include selecting job candidates, appraising performance, and A. Establishing channels of authority, or B. Orienting and training new employees. The answer is B. Orienting and training new employees means providing them with the necessary information and skills so they can become productive members of the organization. Question 3. Human resource management includes many specialists such as recruiters, job analysts, training specialists, and A. Labor relations specialists, or B. Staff managers. The answer is A. Labor relations specialists advise management on all aspects of union management relations. Question 4. Companies may choose to expand abroad in order to expand sales, cut labor costs, or A. Form partnerships, or B. Reduce product lines. The answer is A. Sometimes it's the prospect of forming partnerships that drives firms to do business with firms abroad.
For example, several years ago, IBM sold its PC division to the Chinese firm Lenovo in order to create firmer ties with the booming Chinese market. Okay, let's try a few true-false questions. Question 5. Due to shifts in the U.S. birth rate, there are fewer people in the workforce to replace the retiring baby boomers. True or false? The answer is true. In fact, about 11% fewer people were born in the United States between 1966 and 1985 than were born in the 20 years after World War II. This reduced birth rate means fewer workers to replace the exiting baby boomers. Question 6. Top managers typically design and execute their company strategies without really considering human resources. True or false? The answer is false. Strategic human resource planning is part of strategic planning. Top management wants to see precisely how the human resource manager's plans will make the company more valuable. For instance, by boosting employee skill levels and thus improving performance. Question 7. Recent research suggests that the best-performing companies in a wide range of industries perform so well partly because of their high-performance work systems. True or false? The answer is true. For instance, high-performance work systems produce more qualified applicants per position, more employees hired based on validated selection tests, more hours of training for new employees, and a higher percentage of employees receiving regular performance appraisals. Question 8. It is usually difficult to link most human resource management activities to their impact on company performance. True or false? The answer is false. For most human resource management activities, you can map out the cause and effect links from human resource activity to employee behavior to company performance. For example, at a hotel, an increased use of incentive plans may lead to improved employee customer service ratings, which will lead to more satisfied hotel guests and ultimately improved hotel profits. How are you doing so far? Ready for some short essay questions? Okay, here's the first of two. Question 9. What are the four categories of human resource managers' proficiencies? The four categories of human resource managers' proficiencies are human resource proficiencies, business proficiencies, leadership proficiencies, and learning proficiencies. Last one, question 10. Name the three distinct human resource management functions. The three distinct human resource management functions are the line function, the coordinative function, and the staff function. These three functions help the human resource manager provide specialized assistance and knowledge to the organizational managers. That's the end of this section. Section 3, Key Terms Okay, now we'll review some of the chapter's key terms. I'll give you the term and pause a few seconds while you mentally define it, and then I'll come back and state the definition. Ready? Question 1. What is the management process? The management process consists of the five basic functions of planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling. Question 2. What is authority? Authority is the right to make decisions, direct others' work, and give orders. Question 3. What is a line manager? A line manager is a manager who is authorized to direct the work of subordinates and is responsible for accomplishing the organization's tasks. Line managers have line authority. Question 4. What is the human resource management employee advocacy role? 
The Human Resource Management Employee Advocacy role gives the department responsibility for clearly defining how management should be treating employees, making sure employees have the mechanisms required to contest unfair practices, and representing the interest of employees within the framework of its primary obligation to senior management. Question 5. Who are non-traditional workers? Non-traditional workers are workers who either hold multiple jobs or who are contingent or part-time workers or people working in alternative work arrangements. Question 6. What is human capital? Human capital is the education, training, skills, and expertise of a firm's workers. Question 7. What is the HR scorecard? The HR scorecard measures the human resource function's effectiveness and efficiency in producing the employee behaviors needed to achieve the company's strategic goals. Question 8. What are metrics? Metrics are a set of quantitative performance measures that human resource managers use to assess their operations. Question 9. What is a high-performance work system? A high-performance work system is an integrated set of human resource management policies and practices that produce superior employee performance. It typically includes employment security, selective hiring, extensive training, and emphasis on high-quality work. Last one, question 10. What is job outsourcing? Job outsourcing lets outside vendors perform work. For example, one form of job outsourcing is the movement of jobs previously performed by U.S. workers to workers abroad. That's the end of this section. Section 4, Rapid Review Are you ready for the exam? Let's see. In this section, I'll give you a question and pause for just a few seconds before giving you the answer. Ready? Question 1. What is human resource management? Human resource management includes the policies and practices needed to carry out the people or human resource aspects of a management position, including recruiting, screening, training, rewarding, and appraising. Question 2. What is line authority? Line authority gives managers the right or authority to issue orders to other managers or employees. Question 3. What is strategy? Strategy is the company's long-term plan for how it will balance its internal strengths and weaknesses with its external opportunities and threats to maintain a competitive advantage. Question 4. What are the three major changes or trends affecting today's human resource management practices? The three major changes or trends affecting today's human resource management practices are globalization, changes in the nature of work, and technology. Question 5. What is globalization? Globalization is the tendency of firms to extend their sales, ownership, and or manufacturing to new markets abroad. Question 6. What are some of the current trends in the nature of work? Some of the trends in the nature of work today include an increase in high-tech jobs, an increase in the number of service jobs, and an increase in knowledge work and an emphasis on human capital. Question 7. What is strategic human resource management? Strategic human resource management means formulating and executing human resource policies and practices that produce the employee's competencies and behaviors the company needs to achieve its strategic aims. Question 8. What are the three ways in which human resource management practices can improve performance? 
human resource management practices can improve performance through the use of technology, through effective human resource practices, and by instituting high-performance work systems. Question 9. Define ethics. Ethics refers to the standards someone uses to decide what her conduct should be. Last one, question 10. What is the purpose of human resource certification? The purpose of human resource certification is to test human resource professionals' knowledge of all aspects of human resource management, including management practices, staffing, development, compensation, labor relations, and health and safety. That's the end of this section. This concludes the Van Gogh notes for this chapter. We hope you found this audio review helpful. Be sure to check out other Van Gogh notes for textbooks published by Pearson Education. Audible hopes you have